going on YouTube is your boy Yzma back to you with another try hack me challenge and today I will be working on nmap basic port scans and we'll be learning in depth on how to how how nmap TCP connect scan TCP SYN port scan and UDP port scan work moving on to task one introduction this room is the second in the nmap series part of the introduction to network security module one will be going over nmap live host discovery second one is nmap basic port scan which is what we are doing right now third one is nmap advanced port scans and the final one is nmap port scans which seems like the same but slightly different but anyways we'll continue in the previous room we focused on discovering online systems so far we have covered three steps of a, of a nmap scan we've learned enumeration targets we've learned discover live hose and we learn how to reverse dns lookups so the next step would be checking which ports are open and listening listening and which ports are closed therefore in this room and the next one we focus on port scanning and the different types of port scannings used by nmap this room explains tcp connect port scan uh, also tcp sin port scan and udp port scan moreover we discuss the different options to specify the ports the scan rate and the number of parallel probes moving on to answer the question below launch the attack box by using the start attack box button you will launch different types of scans against the target virtual machine to gain a solid knowledge of nmap and basic scan types so let's go ahead and start it and it started so now we're going to hit complete and move on to the next section Moving on to task 2, TCP and UDP ports. In the same sense that an IP address specifies hosts on a network among many others, a TCP port or UDP port is used to identify a network service running on that host. A server provides the network service and it adheres to a specific network protocol. Examples include pro providing time responding to DNS queries and serving web pages. A port is usually linked to a service using that specific port number. For instance, an HTTP server would bind the TCP port 80 by default. Moreover, if that HTTP server supports SSL or TLS, it would listen on TCP port 443. <laughs> TCP port 80 and 443 are the default ports for HTTP and HTTPS. However, the web server administrator might choose other port numbers if necessary. Furthermore, no more than one service can listen on an any TCP or UDP port on the same IP address. At the risk of oversimplification, we can classify ports in two states. <laughs> Open port indicates that there are that there in some services listening on port. Closed port indicates that there is no service listening on that port. <laughs> However, in practical situations we need to consider the important firewalls. For instance, a port might be open but a firewall might be blocking the packets. Therefore, Nmap considers the following six states. 1. Open indicates that a service is listening on the specific port. 2. Closed indicates that no service is listening on the specific specified port. Although the port is accessible, by accessible we mean that it is reachable and is not blocked by a firewall or other security appliance programs. 3. Filtered means that Nmap cannot determine if the port is open or closed because the port is not accessible this states th this state is usually due to a firewall preventing nmap from reaching that port nmap's, NMAP's packets by may be blocked from reaching the port 
Alternatively, the responses are blocked from reaching Nmap host unfiltered, means that Nmap cannot determine if the port is open or closed. Although the port is accessible, this, state's incur in this state is encountered when using an ACK scan minus SA. Open filter. This means that Nmap cannot determine whether the port is open or filtered. Closed filter. This means that Nmap cannot decide whether a port is closed or filtered. Alright guys, moving on to answer the questions below. Which, services, which service uses UDP port 53 by default? That's DNS. Second question, which service uses TCP port 22 by default? That's SSH. Next question, how many port states does Nmap consider? That's six. Moving on, which port state is the most interesting to discover as a pen tester? And that's open. Moving on to task three, TCP flags. Nmap supports different types of TCP port scans. To understand the difference, between these port scans, we need to review the TCP header. The TCP header is the first 24 bytes of a TCP segment. The following figure shows the TCP header as defined in RFC 793. This figure looks sophisticated at first, however, it is pretty simple to understand in the first row. We have the source TCP port number and simple to understand in the first row. We have the source TCP port number and the destination port number. We can see that port number in out number is allocated in 16 bits, two bytes in the second and third rows. We have the sequence number and the acknowledgement number. Each row has 32 bits, four bytes allocated with six rows total, making up 24 bytes. <laughs> In particular, we need to focus on the flags that Nmap can set or unset. We have highlighted the TCP flags in red, settings. A flag bit means settings its value to one from left to right. The TCP header flags are urg or URG. Urgent flag indicates that the urgent pointer field is significant. The urgent pointer indicates that the incoming data is urgent and that a TCP segment with the erg flag set is set is processed immediately without consideration of having to wait on previously sent TCP segments. Second one, the acknowledgement flag indicates that the acknowledgement number is significant. It is used to acknowledge the receipt of a TCP segment. Third one, we have the push flag as asking TCP to pass the data to application promptly. Fourth one, we have a reset flag is used to reset the connection. Another device such as firewall might send it to tear a TCP connection. This flag is also used when data is sent to a host and there is no service on the receiving end to answer. Fifth one, we have our synchronized flag. It's used to initiate a TCP three-way handshake and synchronize sequences numbers with other hosts. The sequence number should be set randomly during TCP connection establishment. And we have our sixth one, the, the fin or the center the center has no more data to send. All right, guys, moving on to answer the questions below. What three letters represent the reset flag? And that is RST. Next question, which flag needs to be set when you initiate a TCP connection? First packet of TCP three-way handshake, that's SYN. All right, guys, moving on to task four, TCP connect scan. TCP Connect Scan works by completing the TCP three-way handshake in the standard TCP connection establishment. The client sends a TCP packet with SYN flag sent and the server responds with SYN 
or the act if the pore is open finally the client completely completes the three-way handshake by sending an act tcp three-way handshake so you have your sin synchronize acknowledge acknowledge we are interested in learning whether the tcp port is open not establishing a tcp connection hence the connection is torn as soon as its states is confirmed by sending a rst or the acknowledgement you can choose to run TCP connect scan using slash ST and map slash ST or target. <laughs> it is important to note that if you are not a not a privileged user, root or sudo, a TCP scan is only possible option to discover open TCP ports. And the following Wireshark packet capture window we see nmap sending tcp packets with sin flags set to various ports 256 443 and 143 and so on by default nmap will attempt to connect to the thousand most common ports a closed tcp port responds to a sin packet with reset slash acknowledge to indicate that it is not open this pattern will repeat for all the closed ports and at, when we attempt to initiate a tcp three-way handshake with them <laughs> we notice that port 143 is open so it replied with synchronize and acknowledge and nmap completed the three-way handshake by sending an acknowledgement the figure below shows all the packets exchanged between our nmap host and target systems port port 143 the first three packets are the tcp three-way handshake being completed then the fourth packet tears it down with a reset and an acknowledgement packet to illustrate the slash st tcp connect scan the following command example return a detailed list of the open ports. Yeah. Note we have used the slash F to enable fast mode to mode in and decrease the number of scan ports by a thousand to a hundred common ports. Sorry guys, I was just checking up on something. It is worth mentioning that the slash R option can also be added to scan the ports in the consecutive order to instead of a random order, this option this option is useful when testing whether ports open in a consistent manner, for instance, when the target boots up. Guys, moving on to answer the questions below. We're going to launch the virtual machine, open the attack box and execute right here, nmap slash st 10.10.10. I'm sorry, dot seven dot four via the terminal. A new service has been installed on this virtual machine since our last scan. Which port number was closed in the scan above, but is now open in this target virtual machine. So we will type this in and map slash s capital t 10 dot 10 dot 7 dot 4 we're gonna hit enter so as you could see the answer is right here 110 so type in 110 so what is nmap's guess about the newly installed service and that is pop 3 and we have completed this section and we can move on to the next Moving on to task 5 tcp synchronized scan unprivileged users are limited to connect scan However, the default scan mode is sin scan, and it requires a privileged root or sudo user to run it. Sin scan does not need to complete 
the TCP three-way handshake. Instead, it tears down the connection once it receives a response from the server. Because we didn't establish a TCP connection, this decreases the chances of the scan being logged. We can select this scan type by using the slash S capital S option. The figure below shows how to how the TCP send scan works without completing the TCP three-way handshake. The following screenshot from Wireshark shows a TCP SYN scan. The behavior in the case of closed TCP ports is similar to that of TCP connect scan. To better see the, the difference between the two scans, consider the following screenshot. In the upper half of the following figure, we can see a TCP connect scan slash st capital t traffic any open tcp port will require nmap to complete the tcp three-way handshake before closing the connection in the lower half of the following figure we see how a sin scan cap uh, slash s capital s does not need to complete the tcp three-way handshake instead the nmap sends a rst packet once a a synchronize slash acknowledge package is received. TCP scan is the default scan mode when running nmap as a privileged user. Running as root or using sudo, it is very reliable choice. It, it has successfully discovered the open ports you found earlier with the TCP connect scan, yet no TCP connection was fully established with the target. All right, guys. Moving on to answer the question below. Launch the virtual machine. Some new, some new server software has been installed since the last time we scanned it. On the attack box, use the terminal to execute the n n map. N map. Oh lord. Sorry about that. N map. N map slash s capital S 10 dot 10 10 dot 10 56 dot 234 234 we're gonna hit enter what is the new port what is the new port so basically at C, you could see the last one ended at 143 TCP open IMAP. So our new one right here is this 6667. We type that in there. Moving on to the next one. What is NMAP's guess of the service name? And that's IRC. Moving on to task six, UDP scan. UDP is a connection, oh, I'm sorry, connectionless port protocol, and hence it does not require any handshake for connection establishment. We cannot guarantee that a service listening on UDP port will respond to our packets. However, if a UDP packet is sent to a closed port, an ICMP port unreachable error type 3 code 3 is returned. You can select UDP scan using the slash SU option. Moreover, you can combine it with another TCP scan. The following figure shows that if we send a UDP packet to open UDP port, we cannot expect any reply in return. Therefore, sending a UDP packet to an open port won't tell us anything. However, as shown in the figure below, we expect to get an ICMP packet of type 3 destination unreachable and code 3 port unreachable. In other words, the UDP ports that don't generate any response are the ones that NMAP will stay as open. In the Wireshark capture below, we can see that every closed port will generate 
will generate an ICMP packet destination on reachable port on on reachable. Sorry. Launching a UDP scan against this Linux server proved a valuable in and, and indeed we learned that port 111 is open. Open the other hand and map on the other hand, Nmap cannot determine whether UDP port 68 is open or filtered. So I'm going to go ahead and start this machine. And all right, guys, I'm sorry about that. Moving on to answer the question below. So we're going to launch the virtual machine on the attack box using the terminal to execute Nmap. Sorry about that. I need to type this in and map s u f V ten dot ten dot one nine six dot five five five. We're going to hit enter and uh one thing to keep in mind is this thing takes forever to load so just give it some time and should populate the information you need in a few seconds however i already did it for us so this is what it's ultimately gonna pop up so the first one it took me about like maybe a minute for it to like populate so let's just see let's see right here's the 38 seconds remaining however this is what's gonna pop up so for the first one it's right here it's 53 so what is the UDP port that is open now it's port 53 what is the service name according to nmap and that's domain and as you can see it's still taking forever but yeah that was pretty much it alright guys moving on to task 7 fine-tuning scope and performance you can specify the port you want to scan instead of the default 1000 ports Specifying the ports is intuitive by now. Let's see some examples. Port list slash P22 slash 80 and 443. Sorry about that. We'll scan ports 22, 80, and 443. Port range slash P1 slash 1023 will scan all ports between 1 and 1023 inclusive while slash p20 and slash pl25 will scan between 20 and 25 inclusive you can request the scan of all ports by using slash p which will scan all 665535 ports if you want to scan the most the most common 100 ports add slash f using slash slash Top slash ports 10 will check the most common ports. You can control the scan timing using slash T05 to slash T0 and the slowest paranoid while slash T5 is the fastest. According to Nmap manual page, there are six templates paranoid, sneaky, polite, normal aggressive and insane so as you can see all of them so you have zero one two three four and five 
To avoid IDS alerts, you may consider slash T0 or T1. For instance, slash T0 scans one port at a time and waits five minutes between sending each probe. So you can guess how long scanning one target would take to finish. If you don't specify any timing, NMAP uses normal slash three, no, slash T3. Note that slash T5 is the most aggressive in terms of speed. However, this can affect the accuracy of the scan results to the increased likelihood of packet loss. Note that slash T4 is often during F CTFs and when learning to scan practice targets where slash T1 is often used during real engagement where stealth is more important. Alternatively, you can choose to control the packet rate using slash slash min slash rate numbers max rate number for example slash slash max slash rate 10 or slash slash max slash rate equals 100 i'm sorry 10 ensures that you are ensures that you scanner is not sending more than 10 packets per second moreover you can control probing paralyzation using slash slash main slash parallelism slash number probes and slash slash max slash parallelism and the number probes and map probes the targets to discover which hosts are live and which ports are open probing parallelization specifies numbers of such probes that can be run in parallel for instance, slash slash min slash parallelism equals 512 pushes and map maintains at least 512 probes in parallel. These 512 probes are related to host discovery and open ports. Right, guys, moving on to answer the questions below. What is the option to scan all the TCP ports between 5,055 Oh, I'm sorry, 5,500. So we have P5000 slash 5,500. That's how you type it. Next one. How can you ensure that Nmap will run at least 64 probes in parallel? So basically you typed in slash slash min slash parallelism equals 64. You hit correct. I mean, enter. Then, uh, what option would you add to make Nmap very slow and paranoid? That's slash capital T N zero. So moving on to task eight summary. This room we covered three types of scans. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna go over the port scan type. So TCP connect scan, TCP synchronized scan, UDP scan. And here are its example commands. You're free to pause the video just to check them out. <laughs> Moving on, these types of types should get you started discovering running TCP and UDP services on a target host slash P all ports slash P1 slash 1023 scan ports to 1 to 1023 slash F. 100 most common ports we have slash r scan ports consecutive order slash t 0 to 5 t 0 being the slowest and t 5 the fastest we have slash slash max slash rate 50 so i'll let you read that guys actually so moving on to answer the questions below ensure you have taking note of all scan options covered in this room. It is time to learn more advanced sports scanning techniques by joining the Nmap Advanced Sports Scans room. With that being said, guys, I hope you finish reading these right here. 
and we are ready to go.